So, hello all together. Thank you for coming here. And uh, please bear with me. Uh, it's my first time. Uh, please be gentle. Uh, I'll try not to speak too fast, as uh, he told me, he gave a good tip, and um, get some air in once in a while. <coughs> Yeah, um, today I'm going to talk about DQ Automate. Uh, that's a tool we developed ourselves uh, for um, figuring out some, some issues we had to uh, monitor different systems and um, customers. But first, we do a little introduction uh, of ourselves, uh, me and the company. Uh, my name is David Kinchi. I'm senior system engineer in our MDAM specialist team, and I'm um, working since six years uh, for DQ Solutions. Um, started as a Mac OS, iOS technician, and uh, had the pleasure to um, evolve to the uh, business team. Yeah, that's the picture for uh, some, some of you who don't know me. Um, our company is uh, Swiss-based. Uh, we got 13 uh, retail stores and uh, about four uh, business units uh, all around Switzerland. And um, yeah, now I have to do the mandatory introduction of uh, DQ Solutions. <coughs> uh, that's who we are. Founded in 1991 and uh, all the figures and facts uh, rebranded in 2018. We uh, formerly known as DataQuest. Uh, for those who haven't answered the poll, that's the hint. <coughs> so we um, evolved out of those three uh, companies into DQ Solutions. And. Uh, since then, specialized for Apple since over 30 years. Uh, got all the different statuses we can uh, have from Apple. And next up is a little video that saves me some speech time. Uh, haha, pre-recorded um, because all my team members are here. Thanks for that. And thanks, Benny, uh, for being my victim for uh, our little video. So let's enjoy. Hi, Benny. Thank you for being here and giving the audience a quick update about how the journey with DQ Automate started. Please feel free to say some words about you. Hi, David. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm at DQ Solutions now for seven years. Before that, I worked at the University of Applied Science and was involved in MDM solutions and Mac client support there as well. So round Three years ago, I started in our dedicated MDM team. And since then, I'm also involved in the DQ Automate project. Can you tell us why we found it a good idea to launch the project DQ Automate? What were the specific pain points we tried to solve with it? The primary objective of the product was to create a, a single platform where we um, capture our customers' MDM solution and also had one point for our system engineers to have their um, uh, app li library for app updates, their the script library and also a, a point of yeah, getting information like error events or warning events from the MDM. How did we manage to convince the managing board to, to have such a specialized tool? Yeah, the absence of a tool like that in the market was our starting point. Um, we tried to find something comparison, but didn't have any luck. So yeah, we had to develop it ourselves. What were the first steps in the project after countless workshops to define uh, what should go in the scope of the project? How did it actually start? Yeah, I became involved in the project once the platform was operational and running with basic functionalities. Initially, in that state, we focused on capturing MDM events for our primary MDM solution. DQ Automate is still a work in progress, not only to fill it with contents like recipes, MDM instances and troubleshooting, but also with new features. 
how do we determine what goes into the project and who is responsible for the implementations? Yeah, software is always changing. There's no final version. And yeah, we all always have changing requests as well. So, for example, the transition of the new Champ Pro interface um, uh, led to adjustments in our system. And we also had input from our licensing management team that they needed a place where they um, have an overview over the used and sold Champ Pro licenses. And yeah, we implemented that in a, a, a feature spring. Which tools do we use uh, for project management, ticketing and monitoring the project update? We use Chira for project tracking, creating tickets and yeah, resolve issues. Um, our project board also shows our current tasks and we organize them into sprints. In our weekly meeting, we normally look at the actual state of the project and what's next. We recently had some comparisons with other tools uh, which are going to the same direction as DQ Automate. We also had meetings with those vendors to get a deeper understanding. We then decided to stick to our tool. What were the main reasons for that? Yeah, alternative solutions had some features we also implemented, like the um, app updates or a different view on Champ Pro, but they also had a lack of other features we are working with or needing. So like the license management or the overview over all our customers MDM solutions that was just missing and was the point why we sticked with our own solution. As of today, are you satisfied with DQ Automate even it took some more time than expected for some implementations? Yeah, I'm pleased with, with the actual state and the improvements we made since I'm involved in the project. So, yeah, I'm happy with it and I'm looking forward for everything to come because, yeah, there will always be some good ideas and new feature requests what we can also use or um, make the product even better. Thank you, Benny, again for being here and uh, being my sparing partner. Thank you for watching our little video and I hope you got a, a little bit of an insight into DQ Automate. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, David. Bye. Yeah, after seeing that, uh, I decided not to stick on notes um, because it, it just uh, looked a bit weird. But neither or less, I hope uh, no one's asleep at the moment. Uh, I'll carry on <coughs> with uh, DQ Automate. Um, that's some some sort of a, of the plan I'm going to show you. Uh, what's in there and wh why we we did it like we did, um, as said in the video. I just heard my my last words with the insights. Um, a well-known vendor uh, is still here in the room, who is. Mm, quite doing the, the same thing on a, on a bigger scale. Neither or less, uh, we stick to our tool because we got the monitoring solution for, uh, made for our uh, needs, I would say. So let's start with the login screen. Nice, as you see, uh, that's our office. Um, yeah, just a little show off. <clears throat> then we, we go into the dashboard. That Unfortunately, beginner's fault, uh, screenshots aren't that good uh, on the big screen. I hope you, you get a glimpse of it, uh, neither or less, uh, because I was um, planning to do a live demo, but um, as Dan Jones maybe can fiddle around with the, with the Wi-Fi, I uh, decided not to. So in the dashboard, we got an overview overall, um, the stuff we got into uh, DQ Automate, that uh, we can easily find or uh, identify error events or uh, stuff like that. <coughs> I uh, needed to black out our customers, of course. That's why you, you'll see some uh, black screens in there. Um, 
it also came, comes in a dark mode, but for uh, presenting reasons, I'm going to stick to the light mode. <coughs> yeah, the, the main reason we developed it uh, was uh, to have a tool for monitoring MDMs. Since we became an MSP partner, uh, we needed a solution to tr uh, get track of all uh, our customers uh, if they are MSP, if they uh, got their own instance, if it's Champ, if it's FileWave, and um, tried to figure out how to do so. And um, that's the main page of uh, the stable MDMs. We, we got um, some uh, differentiation between stable and beta MDMs. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And here we see the stable MDMs, uh, which <coughs> in which we see, uh, is it healthy? Uh, is there any warning or error event? Who's the uh, primary engineer? And uh, is, is it syncing? Um, yeah, that's the, the main th thing here. Then when we go to the detailed view, uh, we see uh, the different kind of information we want to. For example, uh, how many licenses are there uh, in use? Is there an overuse? Is everything okay? Um, is it syncing? Is it, uh, has it all the token expirations uh, in place, uh, VPP, uh, DEP, or uh, the APNS? Um, we also tr uh, get track of that. <coughs> Sorry, getting a bit nervous. So the same thing with uh, the beta MDMs here, um, because with the stable MDMs, uh, we can catch uh, the information, for example, over API uh, within Champ Pro. Uh, that's working uh, pretty fine and uh, really stable. Within Champ School or FileWave, we need to go uh, other ways. We can't grab it, uh, for example, with FileWave, we can't grab it uh, easily over an API call. We have to, to uh, crawl uh, all the information, and that doesn't work out that well. At the moment, uh, we're still in the progress to solve that, um, and that gives us some some issues, uh, especially for for the uh, expiration dates of the tokens. And um, here, it's the same thing. Um, here we got, uh, for example, a, a FileWave uh, instance which we. Uh, try to, to get the information out, and uh, we, we also see um, some future features um, with the uh, deployment subscriptions and uh, the, the monitoring of the app versions, for example. And that's um, the example of a Champ School instance. And within Champ School, uh, the customer can decide, oh yeah, um, DQ Solutions is my reseller, but uh, we, we don't even know uh, the customer. So we implemented also uh, the reseller type here, uh, which is direct or an indirect um, reselling of licensing. <clears throat> and then uh, we get also an overview over the, uh, the uh, error or uh, warning events within uh, the, the instances. For example, uh, as, you, as you see here, the push certification will expire or is expired, uh, whatever uh, reason that has. Hopefully it doesn't expire, so that's why we have the tool in place. And that's uh, the same thing with the warning events. A lot of black uh, screens here. And that brings us, uh, we can also um, do some uh, email uh, warning events uh, that we, we uh, receive an email if, if there's a specific warning event or a specific customer. Uh, we can also uh, do that within uh, this, this web uh, interface. Next one, uh, we implemented an app repository. I know uh, there is the App Store, Champ App Catalog, whatever uh, reason, but 
especially in Switzerland, we have uh, architecture or health customers which are depending on, on specific um, apps or applications. They, you won't find them anywhere and you also have to patch them. Um, and that's why we came up with our own repository. My colleagues in here somewhere behind who is responsible for that. Um, we do that uh, on a Mac Mini with um, when it's when when uh, possible with Installmator or even Monkey or tools like that. Everybody is aware of that. <clears throat> and then we we're going to deploy them uh, into DQ Automate. We also got then uh, the possibility to choose the version. Uh, depends on uh, on uh, dependencies of other uh, apps or Mac OS. Um, releases, I would say. And here we see, for example, uh, at Google Chrome, the different uh, app versions we can, we can grab, we can test them. They are all uh, packaged and uh, ready for deployment in, within MDNs. <coughs> and then, uh, of course, some, uh, we'll try to implement some app categories uh, that we can easily find uh, the different apps within uh, the repository itself. What brings us to the next one, a script repository. Yeah, GitHub exists, everybody knows that, we can copy it out of that. But uh, for us, if we are working uh, within the DQ Automate, we can easily switch to the script repository and uh, do the deployment over there, or uh, copy it out if, if needed. <coughs> That's why we decided to also uh, have the, the most common repository uh, on our site so that we, can, uh, we don't have to switch between uh, applications. Also here, we got the details about um, the ap application or script itself. Uh, the, here, I don't know if you see it, uh, if the, here's the latest um, which you can uh, choose from, and you can also have it in the editor, um, editable if you, if you need some uh, <coughs> some changes to it. Yeah, that's um, about that. What brings us next to the customers? Because all uh, what we have seen here. Um, is pre-built to uh, get it out to customers in an automatic way. At the moment, we can uh, download the packages and deploy them uh, in the different MDM solutions, but uh, the main goal is to automize uh, all that stuff and um, that we can choose, uh, okay, those customers uh, from the health um, would get their specific uh, applications. And that's the, the main reason why we um, got the app repository in there. Uh, at the moment, we are uh, also in a testing stage there, but hopefully uh, it will be uh, available soon to our customers. Um, as I said, the deployment subscriptions uh, in which we um, de can deploy uh, different apps to different groups or uh, specific customers. Uh, also here, we, we get the details about the deployment, and if we make it editable, uh, you can see uh, what source type, what criteria it is, uh, which applica applications we need, uh, and if, it's, if it goes to specific MDMs or a, or a group, or uh, also with the policy type, uh, we can already choose from here how does, does it has to, de to be deployed uh, to the customer. And then we see here uh, the deployment entries. Uh, that means uh, a little log file uh, to see if, uh, if the deployment was successful. And um, we then also need to grab the information from the MDM back. Um, was it successful? Is the right version deployed? And uh, get it in here. And uh, for 
the observing reasons, uh, also a little status um, update uh, in which we can see if the, all the uh, systems are operational. <coughs> what brings me now to uh, the future features? Um, that means uh, we want to give our MSP customers the possibility to uh, to do some stuff in their instances. You know, uh, when a customer has an MSP instance, we are um, responsible for all uh, the, the deployments and uh, the patch management and stuff like that, but the customer itself doesn't have any rights to, to uh, write in their own uh, instance. They only have audit rights, which uh, is also for the sales um, quite difficult to explain. And that's why we want to uh, implement a web GUI uh, for the customer in which we can uh, provide basic functionality like wipe device, uh, restart devices, and stuff like that over an API call. So uh, that's also approved by Champ that we can go that way to, to give a basic functionality to the customer and um, that, that they don't have to uh, call us or uh, email our service desk uh, every time they have a little issue with a device, for example. Uh, next step will also be uh, the implementation of uh, Champ Protect. We also want to, to see um, is, for example, the threat prevention on the actual version uh, on the machines. Um, if there are uh, alerts with uh, high severity, we also want to know that uh, immediately and don't have to look in every Champ Protect uh, instance in itself. And uh, last but not least, we are also planning to, to uh, get into GitHub uh, with our own page. Uh, that hopefully happens uh, also soon. <coughs> And now I see I'm a bit too fast. Uh, neither or less, I hope someone's here who can help me out with question and answer in the app. I don't see anyone. You can also ask them directly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, David, for the, for the nice um, presentation. And for us also as an MSP, it's some interesting uh, stuff in there. But on the other side, um, for me, technically, you're using a lot of API calls, and uh, you also store a lot of uh, secure information, and especially if you're planning to open up the system for web applications to allow your customers wipe the device, mm -hmm. that, uh, for me, sounds like a, a big risk for, for attackers, and, and so how you secure your system, and uh, did your own or uh, did you host that by yourself, or how do you do it, and then how to ensure that secure-wise everything is in place? Yeah. Um, we host it uh, in an AWS uh, environment uh, at the moment, and uh, the API calls we are uh, getting from, from Champ Pro or uh, stuff like that is just the basic functionality. We uh, create, for example, users within Champ Pro with a, a custom uh, write set. Uh, so we, we only can fetch the, the data we needed uh, without having access to the whole instance. Uh, that's one point. And uh, on, on the other point, I'm not quite sure if there are any other security um, things in place. Maybe you can help me out, Benny, because uh, he's more into it. Yeah. Kind of pen testing against the systems right now, because even if you're 
talking about uh, healthcare, so I assume that that uh, customer will request uh, some uh, some documentation and testing against the uh, the platform. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we don't do uh, 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 specific pen testing. We, we only uh, try to, to secure it against uh, the risk outside uh, the, the container. Uh, but thanks for the input. Um, even if we open it up, uh, we, because our main programmer uh, isn't here at the moment, so I don't get any more insights uh, to that, but I can catch up with you uh, with some more detailed information how he secures uh, the environments, if that's okay with you. That would be cool. And sorry for... No, 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 crop. No, uh, we are working a lot for, for financial and insurance companies, and they treat us... Uh, yeah, quite us badly. With those kind of <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, some... Any other questions? I'll just look into the uh, the app, but the app says no. So fine for me. Oh no, Perry, you don't. <laughs> yeah. And no, I saw that you've got Farway in there. Are yeah. you going to sort of branch out to other Indian platforms? Um, not a uh, Intune will will be a. Uh, uh, to discuss, yeah, um, because we are currently grabbing all the information from our current customers, and um, we also have um, some Intune customers, but we are currently also in the progress to, um, to get new uh, employees which have uh, the Intune know-how uh, specifically. And uh, because it's a big, uh, <coughs> a big case for even for schools which have uh, the um, the Intune uh, licensing within their uh, school license, and yeah, that's that will be also in there. <coughs> but I assume they have a, also a good API um, uh, calls for for uh, grabbing the information. Yeah, but currently we are uh, only have FileWave and uh, the Champ products because we are mainly working with them. Mark. Yeah, we can also remediate, uh, may, uh, like you see, now we're uh, mail alerts, for example, and our um, purchase team uses it to, um, to get uh, the new licenses out to the customers. Uh, so yeah, that's the remediation we have in there. And of course, uh, to react uh, if, if something happens. But uh, we, 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 we stay alerted, uh, especially for the expiration of uh, the APNS, um, which is, as, as you know, is a pain to, to uh, yeah. <coughs> do that after it's uh, exp expired, yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. Just lastly on your, on your scripting. Um, so when you, when you were populating your repository with scripts, <coughs> does that give you the ability to push out to all your MSPs the same script that you would possibly want to use on all of those, you know, because it's, it's like a cookie cutter approach, but you can then still keep using, instead of uploading scripts all the time, you can just do it in one go. Yeah, uh, uh, you, you mean like uh, installmator wise or? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah we can uh, deploy scripts also to, to uh, all the MS, all the customers or uh, different groups of customers or specific customer uh, itself, yeah. like. Like needed. So you're just uploading one app yeah. to there, and which you can then use for all the Distribute, yeah. Activity. Any more questions from Theo, maybe? <laughs> or or uh, inputs? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then uh, I think we're good to go. And thank you for listening, and uh, have a nice evening at Shelter Hall. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>